And a warm welcome to all our viewers as we go into day two of the Singapore Open in 2018. Mm -hmm. We've switched locations, no longer at Central Park SG, but uh, rest assured, me and Justin are still friends. <laughs> hey, my name is Matthew Hui. Hey, and I am Justin. And we will be taking you through the top card of today's Singapore Open with uh, 150 championship points at stake to the winner. Yeah, all the players um, but taking part in the top eight, I believe, are all 5 1. There are no 4 2s that made it on to the top eight and today. For the, and for that matter, no 6 zeros yeah, either. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay, yeah. Hey, yeah, no one's, no one went flawless. Right, a bit. Chelsea's run and ending the last round of Swiss. My, I suppose, I suppose it didn't matter anymore. Yeah, yeah because she was guaranteed top card at that point. Yeah, so, so all the players uh, evenly spaced with 5 1, only separated by uh, resistance. Mm -hmm. So that's how the seedings kind of panned out. So there's no real. There's no real differenti differentiating factor between the first place and eighth place. Not like typical tournaments where you get a six zero play against a four two. Yeah. This time they're all four one, so nothing to separate Five the players ones, here. Five ones, yeah, correct. Yeah. Uh, so for the first round they'll be bringing will be Chelsea versus Edward. Uh, Chelsea, a local Singapore player here against Edward, uh, who has come down, uh, from overseas to take part, and uh, he's I think he should be quite happy. Uh, with what he's uh, accomplished no, so far. No, Is no. We're talking about Edward here. Edward not gonna be happy <laughs> with anything other than a win. And uh, you have to you have, you have to admire that uh, level of competitiveness in him. Mm. As pointed out, both players are very uh, decorated. As we are going to the Singapore Open, the first Open of the 2018 season, it should be noted that the last Open of the 2017 season was won by Chelsea. Mm. Okay, we'll be looking to see if she'll be able to repeat that performance. And Edward, of course, uh, coming off a mid-season showdown win in Hong Kong, mm -hmm. his home country. Yeah. Um, okay, going into the teams, uh, on the side of Chelsea, we have the Cressella, Landerus, Tapu Coco, Incineroar, Gyarados, and Snorlax. So Edward will be countering with his Komo O, Charizard, Tapu Coco, Snorlax, Landorus, Therian, and the Katana. Yeah, as mentioned from the interview yesterday, Edward said he drew some s inspiration for his team from uh, Marcus Stetter, a German player whom we all look up to. Yeah, Marcus actually finished second in his own mid-season showdown hmm. with this team composition. Which is a strange news, Edward won the mi his own <laughs> mid-season showdown with a different Komo team, but chose to draw inspiration from the team that finished second in Germany. Hmm. Well, perhaps he saw some potential, and going into this matchup, what, what sort of uh, what sort of leads do you think they'll start with? Well, the thing we need to keep in mind is that how well Edward we saw Edward do in with the Snorlax yesterday on stream. Hmm. I I have to feel that there was a different set of circumstances because he was playing against mainly a a very a team very focused on trick room. But in the situation where he does get out of control of the curse boost. You need to keep in mind, a lot of it might hitch on what Chelsea carries as a dark move on the Incineroar. Yeah, but, but not to forget that Chelsea does have Snorlax on Actually, her own as well. Actually, we think about it, mm. both of Incineroar's dark moves do well against Snorlax. Uh, Darkest Lariat ignores defense. And Knockoff just takes off A to Barry. Hmm. Alright so then. So she says Edward plays Curse. So he has no control over when he eats he, Barry. He does have some control with because he runs double H on the Snorlax. So he can sort of bring his Snorlax down to the 50% to trigger the Barry. But yeah, the, the, the control is not really immediate. La. So yeah, but, uh, no, but yeah, Edward does lead immediately with the Snorlax, perhaps sensing an opportunity to set up, mm. leading the Landorus to get the Intimidate. Unfortunately, Chelsea calling the leads does not bring a physical attacker to suffer the yeah. Intimidate. Crest and Tapu Koko. Tapu Koko, of course, quite threatening. If he does carry the Electro Ball, will punish Snorlax underwhelming speed. But no, nope. switch out. I mm. don't think he carries Electro Ball on this team. And Landorus does come in to get Intimidate on both of Edward's physical attackers. Mm. Pretty good switch in there. Uh, what does Crest do though? Crest does typically carry Ice Mills with the Icy Wind or Ice Beam, so could threaten the Landorus. Yeah, but Edward sees that coming, gets the U-turn in on the Landorus on, on the Crestalia on Chelsea's side, and will remove itself and, it and reset its attack for later yeah, in the game. More importantly, dodging perhaps a potential Ice attack. Uh, Crest nowadays typically tend to run Icy Wind as well. I'd uh, say it's an even split there. Some Crestalias don't really need the speed control from the Icy Wind, mm. but Chelsea's team apparently does. Does go for the Icy Wind. So the question I suppose for both players to think about is whether or not Chelsea carries the trick room as well. I have to feel that that is very likely considering she does have Snorlax of her own. However, Edward carrying his own Snorlax probably would benefit more from the trick room if she were to stand up at this point. Which Indeed. is why she goes for the Icy Wind. But Edward gets his first curse boost in, resets his attack to neutral and gets a defense boost yeah, to the def take any potential superpowers. Yeah, so the lender is not looking too hot auto and well, we don't know if Psyshock or Psychic is the a choice of attack for Chelsea's crest as well, or even whether he has a psychic attack. Como though taking a bit of damage from that uh, icy wind and gonna eat the earthquake here as well. Ooh. Landorus on Chelsea's side not intimidated, so Como doesn't resist the ground. Gonna take a fair chunk, even with his decently high physical defense. Yeah, stand. honestly, I think crest. And Psyshock gonna finish it off here with a super effective Psyshock onto the Como, and Edward, perhaps, letting it rock. Eh? Happy to lose his Como in response in return for getting the damage on the Snorlax. Um. You see the double coming in, not going to activate uh, the Cresselia Berry since it is not the Citrus. Mm. 
and yeah, so we did see Psy Shock, so that means the Snorlax should be able to take um, that attack quite yeah, comfortably Psy as well. Yeah, not going to be able to get through the curse boost. And Edward brings in Charizard, not really something you want to be facing off against the Landorus. We couldn't really tell in terms of speed what sort of item the Landorus is holding, whether it's the Scarf. However, the if it is Scarf, she's knocked herself into the Earthquake, making it a very Ooh. good chance for Charizard to come in. I think Edward recognized that. So if it is the Assault Vest, which means if it is the Assault Vest, which means it can change moves. It's probably but slower than the Charizard. Yeah, but then the Charizard will be able to punish with uh, perhaps a overheat or heat wave of its own. Yeah, and Chelsea, I think, pretty much confirming to Edward that that is the Scarf Landorus. Forced to retreat the Earthquake Lock Landorus. Goes to the own Snorlax, who despite a decent special defense that doesn't particularly enjoy taking fire attacks in the sun. Heat wave does have a chance to burn as well. and Yeah, there's no uh, protective terrain on either player's side. Mm -hmm. I guess Cresselia should can do a Might decent just go amount down to, to the, the fire attack mm. here actually and stays in. And Charizard goes for the heat wave, lands on the Cresselia. Is it gonna do enough? Or is it gonna activate Cresselia's berry? Cresselia oh, hangs on against the berry. 10 HP, clutch berry. Hmm. And Cresselia gonna go for the side shock into the Charizard, you suspect, since yeah. the Snorlax is kind of impenetrable right now. And Charizard does have a lower As special. Ever gets lower his own double engine on Chelsea Ch Snorlax, gonna bring it down to the red and get his own berry. <laughs> Both players getting their berries, in fact. Yeah, but uh, well, I guess Edwards. Uh, both Snorlaxes both have neutral attack. Uh, Edward just have uh, a nice boost. plus one defense and a reduced speed as well. So. However, Charizard at this point could. Mm. Well, I, but th the point here is that Crystal is now out of range for a heat wave since we saw how much the first heat wave did. Yeah. However, he Edward could just go for the single target fire attack, which would take Crystal out. Mm, it leaves itself open to the Snorlax though, and. I'm not sure, but I, I, I sort of think that Chelsea is going to switch out, bringing the Landers again. For another Intimidate? Mm. Knowing that uh, the Heat Wave won't be able to kill the Cresselia. However, oh. so he wants, you, you think she wants to keep the Snorlax in? Or keep the Cresselia in? I, I think you keep the Cresselia. Oh, that's actually interesting. I think you keep the Cresselia in and you the let Intimidate the Intimidate is not that valuable. Yeah. So I think Edward's more focused on, on getting his defense hmm. up here. No switches though. Charizard goes for the protect. So no switch in for Landorus to punish. going for another side shock into the Charizard. Mm -hmm. And Chelsea's own Snorlax goes for the recycle to get the berry back. What does Edward's uh, Snorlax go for? Edward's going to go for another for? curse. Just oh. goes for the double edge. Into the Cresselia. Into the Cresselia. It's going to do a good chunk there. Put it in Heatwave range. Mm. If, of course, it hits. Uh, Heatwave does have an unfortunate side effect of not being 100% accurate. Um, yeah, I'm a bit surprised Edward... Uh, the double edge does make sense, although I kind of expected him to maybe go for another curse. Yeah, especially since we mm. saw him play yesterday, he just sat there accumulating boosts. Yeah, but uh, the double edge does make sense if he wants to threaten the Cressella with the Heat Wave. He switches out the Trizer Y, brings in Landorus, intimidating the Snorlax. And we haven't seen Ever go for its own recycle yet. Yes, so the Snorlax. Uh, honestly, I think the Snorlax can afford. Slash shock into Edward's own uh, Landorus. Mm. That's gonna do a decent amount as Chelsea goes for her own double edge into the Landorus as well. But with the Intimidate, Landorus gonna hang on. As yeah, Edward does go for his own recycle. Hmm. So he's not like not hitting as hard as it could be after those Intimidates. Yeah. Having not been able to match the number of Intimidates with curse boosts. How does Edward want to earthquake his own? No, earthquake can't hit crest either. Rock slide perhaps or another U-turn. You could just U-turn. You could that'll pick up the crest and, and just chunk whoever she switches into. She wants to protect the crest. But if you if you U-turn into the Charizard, I, I kind of feel that Snorlax kind of punches that as well. Hmm. And then, uh, if I'm not wrong, the Charizard is not doing too hot. It's about like 55%. A double H intimidated even, I think it's Yeah, but yeah, never does because of the U-turn. It's gonna hmm. pick up the Cresselia. So it's gonna you gotta make a decision whether you or actually doesn't have a decision to make. Como is down. Mm, yes. So Charles is gonna have to, to take the potential double edge here. But starting to set up for a decent. Better, I suppose if he goes for another curse here, if, as uh, Charles does go for the double edge, it's gonna be enough to pick up the Charles up at fifty five. Uh, not with the intimidate. Yeah, it's gonna hang on. But the problem, of course, by Edward is that now the scarf that comes back in. Yeah, he does have a Landorus at the back to. Intimidate, but he can only switch for so long. I mean, the Intimidate um, is starting to stack on the Snorlax, but his health is getting lower and lower to a point where the Intimidates might not matter. That being said though, it's, it's gonna also reach a point where Chelsea might not be able to break the Snorlax. She only has one big attack left in the Double Coco likely Electrium. Yeah, I think she's banking on that to, to kill the Snorlax. Seems a bit of a dangerous gambit then. Mm. Since I think Albert's focus priority then is to keep his Snorlax as healthy as possible in 
uh, preparation for the Coco coming. Uh, in the preparation for the Coco coming. But at the same in. time, I do. I think Edward should try to pick up as many kills as possible so that his Snorlax is not too pressured and doesn't have to face too much of the world alone. Mm, yeah, Double Coco is like the Gigabolt Havoc, not something a Snorlax wants to be taking. Mm -hmm. Though if he does time it right, he could recycle on the same turn and be in a very good position. Yes, tries it going to protect but here. But Chelsea has no reason to press anything other than Rock Slide at this point. Oh, oh well, she but presses she U-turn. And that could be punished, I think. As Chelsea goes for her own curse, hoping to match Edward's boost. She, she's at 1 and he's at 2. Yeah. I'm not sure about the, the attack stats on uh, both Snorlax. Neutral, both at neutral attack now. As Edward goes for the double edge, into the Landorus. It's gonna take it all the way down to the orange. As Charizard loses its son. So it's pin. Oh, but it's not itself to U turn. But U turn should pick up the KO at this point. Yeah, I, maybe a Landorus. It, it, it comes down to wh which yeah, Pokemon. Yeah, it's not Landorus can come in to take yeah, the U turn. It, it just depends on which Pokemon uh, Edward values more the Charizard or the Landorus. Yeah, he's gonna be the. Yeah, the he values the Charizard. Because he, and he wants to reset the sun when he comes back in. And Chelsea choosing not to switch out the Landorus, so it's going just going for the U turn. I don't damage. know if she should sacrifice the Landorus though. The Landorus is no, Landorus really is good against out. the Coco. Landorus is coming back out. It's going to U turn. Yeah, I know, I know, I know, but as in Chelsea is going to target uh, the Charizard slot because he's going to punish the switch in if possible. And Landorus is kind of good against the Coco, so maybe losing the Landorus could punish him quite badly. As Coco comes in here, ooh, but that's a kind of an open target for Edward's high horsepower. As considering it's a Landorus slot, it's going to have to be a prediction. No, he already locked himself, he already locked himself into U-turn. Oh, okay. That's not a prediction I was part. And that's the Coco he wants to target. Let's see if he goes for it. He should be going for the high horse power here. If he gets the kill on Coco, I think Edward wins with just the Snorlax. Oh, Snorlax versus Snorlax is never fun. But he goes for the, the double edge. edge. Into the Tafu Coco, is that going to be enough? Uh, no, it's not going to oh. be enough. And he puts himself into the orange, gets his berry, but... At this point, because uh, he's cursed more than Chelsea's Snorlax, She's gonna get a double target in before he can recycle again. Hmm. Nah, I'm not oh, worried oh, about. But then, she, but then she can't afford to ignore the Charizard at the same time. I think so she's not in a that bad of a position because she can only if she gives up the Snorlax, the Charizard may just pick off will pick up the Coco. I think Chelsea goes for the uh, Z move on the Charizard here, regardless of whether it protects or not. It's dead, and uh, she she does have Landers at the back to sort of control Snorlax's attack, and she can boost with her own. So yeah, the situation does not look too good for Edward here. Hmm. You have to imagine if he had gone for high horsepower there. Hmm. Indeed, indeed. Would have been a more. I suppose. Game. Okay, a protect. Okay, the Akimo could be made at high horsepower. She doesn't hit that much harder than double edge. Mm. There's only ten base difference. Do you see the overheat come out from the Charizard onto the Snorlax? Oh, that's a lot of damage. He's gonna get his berry. Snorlax I does suppose, recycle. Yeah, go recycle at the, on this exact turn. Hmm. I'm not sure I would expect to get the attack off at all. Yeah, it's a bit of a Hail Mary there. And a double H into the Coco. Hmm. So yeah, Charizard... Overheat nearly taking the KO, cleanly. Yes. I, I think another Overheat would do Not it, but minus, minus two. 2. Hmm. Sun though, Sun. Based on the damage... I think Edward has to start picking up KOs, force the Landorus to come out and force it to lock into something. Because if he forces... If he forces the Landorus to come out and lock itself to Earthquake, then the Coco... Um, wouldn't be too long for the world. And Coco Volt Switch here into the Snorlax, so Charizard gets to live another day. Chelsea may be comfortable with ignoring a minus two Snorlax, a uh, Charizard. Mm, I suppose. I guess but the win I condition think she is to. Landorus to a fire attack regardless. I think her idea is to chip down the Snorlax down to enough health where. Okay, yeah, right. correct. But I think I would recycle this now. Mm, we'll see. Charizard goes for the heat. Does land on Landorus? It should take it out even at the even at the reduced threshold attack. Mm hmm. Snorlax might be able to pick up the KO on uh, Charizard. I mean, he should. Yeah. <laughs> Which picks up the KO here, and what does what does Edward go Edward for needs here? To recycle, I think. He no, just goes, goes for, for double, double H. H. And I think the recoil puts him in KO range for the double Coco. Go. Mm. Doesn't even pick up the Snorlax. Yeah. The curse. Sus. <laughs> so if Chelsea does have the Electrum Z now, now's a really good time to use it. And yeah, I, I think a double into into Snorlax here might be enough. Yeah, especially since he is moving last. So, I mean, hey, is, he, is he moving last? Yes, he is. Cause of all, he had uh, like three curse boosts curses, already. Right. And uh, I guess the main bulk of the damage is going to be from the Electrum. Uh, plus three defense. I think the Snorlax double edge from Chelsea shouldn't do too much. But the problem I think is that he missed the chance to recycle. Coco protects here. Well, if he recycles now, he should, I think. Uh, Chelsea goes for the recycle. 
I guess when it comes down to timer, Chelsea can win based on number of Pokemon left. Photo Pokemon can just easily change that with uh, targeting down the Coco. And yeah, he goes for a recycle. I'm so surprised it's a bit she of went for the play. If she wasn't confident in Gigabyte getting the KO. Then or maybe she, she doesn't the have. Distance. Maybe she doesn't have. Hmm. We've seen both switch. No, she, she, I don't think she wants to double edge because Edward most likely is going for a recycle and then that will put it at a higher HP. And oh, uh, she double edges then he, she she puts the Snorlax closer to Gigabo KO range. Yeah, but considering that Edward used recycle, then the HP would be a lot more than what it is currently for Edward. As in, he wouldn't even get the berry. The double edge wouldn't do enough to bring it to berry. Hmm. And there's a Giga Vote. If he doesn't KO, then Snorlax just gonna heal all the way back up and get the KO on Chelsea's double Coco. Yeah. Well. Well, we're about to find out. If this KOs, then everything we've just said is mostly immaterial. <laughs> but both players know their calculations better than we do. Snorlax does naturally have pretty good special defense, but it now is we've no electric Gigavolt terrain. Has a very strong yeah. option for Snorlax since 2017. And Snorlax is not the healthiest right now. Does, does survive, survive but gets the barrier all the way back up. Woo, so we're nice. in for Snorlax versus Snorlax. Yeah, and uh, Chelsea's own Snorlax is going for double edge there. Uh, that's, that's a decent amount considering that's a plus 3 defense. Snorlax goes for double edge though, not going for... Uh, oh, recycle. Miss. If I miss, we we'll lose. No, uh, no, a recycle. Oh, recycle. Uh, yeah, right. So now though, the advantage is firmly with Chelsea because she has the fastest Snorlax. Mm. Oh, but unless well, it's just both players decide to go to plus six anyway. Looking at the timer though, Chelsea is like ten seconds behind. So, might, so I suppose he might just count down to a crit then. No, but, uh, whoa, notably whoa. only one out of twenty-four. <laughs> Chelsea goes for a curse. Edward probably going for the recycle. Yeah, bring back the HP. In terms of attack, I think Chelsea is a hit. But uh, Snorlax, uh, Edward's own Snorlax does have like a, I think a plus 3 defense. So it sort of evens out. So I think Chelsea needs one more uh, curse to match the defense boost of Edward. Hmm. The ruling for uh, a tie would be the highest HP, the this highest this percentage, is not, right? This is not going to a tie. Hmm. This, this will go down to battle time before it goes to a tie. Okay. So the tie will only be determined in, at the end of a round timer. Huh? This see. is the first game of a set. So it depends on how fast both players press their buttons then. I think we will get a critical hit before that. To All be right honest. then. And Edward goes for another recycle. So has that berry firmly in his pocket here. Not afraid of uh, losing it to knock off. Now do you think he'll start matching the curses as well? He's already slow. No, yeah. Now it's hard to say who's faster. Yeah, actually now Edward becomes faster. <laughs> and get, but now chooses to bring himself back down again with another curse. Oh, hold your horses. Chelsea might curse as well. Honestly at this point, I don't... I don't, yeah, it goes for another curse. I don't really think speed matters. I think what matters will be def the defense boost. And the fact that both Snorlaxes can't really punch through each other. Yeah, might, I think it comes down to time. And I think Edward has been, um, shall we say, <laughs> um, burnt enough times on the timer to make the same mistake? Mm -hmm. And he seems to be making his, he's making his moves very fast. Chelsea's taking, actually taking a few seconds per turn. Mm. Well, Chelsea has been known to rely on critical hits for wins. So I'm not surprised when, if it comes down to, say, when they both had to start pressing double H. What, what is Curse PP? 30? 20? I am honestly not sure. <laughs> well, if it comes down to either players pressing double H. It's not going to come down on PP, that's for sure. Mm. It's too little time on the clock. Yeah, I mean, okay, you just, I, I'm looking at the timer now. Edward has already locked his move, whereas Chelsea... Just, Chelsea took 9 seconds that turn. Uh-huh. Maybe she okay. I mean, this is a this is a point that I think players in the new uh, meta may not recognize the yeah, timer. Yeah, correct. And as I, you as you I, pointed out, I may or may not have <laughs> seen my timer go down to nine seconds. I have seen one game where you went down to like literally two seconds on your battle timer and you won. But uh, yeah, as you mentioned, because the your time starts at five minutes, it starts off red. So there's no there's difference. No, yeah, yeah, there's no sort of change or some sort of indication to let players know that they are running low on time. So Chelsea has like less than a minute left. I'm not sure if she notices. I suppose that's the reason behind the uh, Melvin's new personality. <laughs> He's distracting his opponents to go to <laughs> Oh, whoa, whoa. Revealing all these secrets. Well, my low, my low timer games are both against Melvin, so. <laughs> okay, so both um, players still not opting to attack each other with a uh, double H. All we have seen is curses so far. Okay, that has speaking, changed. Speaking of which, mm -hmm. and we no do see double H. No Ooh. critical hit there. Okay. Goes yes. to the berry. Because of how recycle it works as a mechanic and the berry is recovering passively without the use of a move. Mm. If it if the beam actually came down to timer, it would be hard to see which player will come out on top. Yeah, it it's hard to see who times the recycle, who times the attack to get the berry. Indeed. However, this game probably does not go to timer. Yeah, Edward's already locked in the move whereas Chelsea is taking uh, a couple of seconds. Yeah, one or two seconds. Goes for a double edge of her own. Yeah, that's uh not gonna do a lot of damage. Oh no, sorry, that, that was, was Edward's Snorlax. Yep. Yeah. Edward's Snorlax is the faster one right now. Mm. 
I think I would happy to stay at this level of Gus Booth, it looks like. Mm -hmm. Gus Chelsea feels that she should boost up a bit more. I think her defense is already at max? No. Yeah, it is. So mm. now just increasing attack. Maybe Edward should do the same. Does trigger the parry once again. I think Edward just wants his parry. Yeah, he's, the, the damage, double each recoil is just slowly bringing him closer. Although it's a bit dangerous if Chelsea goes for attack and crits. The crit will kill regardless of the mm. amount of HP. Because the crit will take in consideration the, six, the plus 6 attack and not the plus 6 defense. Indeed. But does he gets his parry all the way back up to almost full. So does Chelsea go for the attack here? Hmm. She goes does. For the and doesn't get the critical hit. That's not a critical hit. Okay. I am surprised. Yeah, I don't think Edward's actually at plus 6. Hmm. No. Uh, yeah, uh, based off the the, curse b the fact that he's moving first. Yeah, I think you're right. And yeah, both Snorlax is going for a recycle here. But now if Edward goes for double edge, he will get his berry. Hmm. But a recycle here, uh, a curse here will be tempting to shop his defenses a bit. Is he going to go first now then? Might be a speed tie at this point. Yeah, not enough. Does trigger her berry, triggers Edward's berry as well. But if he goes for double edge, I think he may be in trouble. Because hmm. the recoil plus the next double edge coming from Chelsea's side. Especially since this is potentially a speed tie. Yeah. He does go for double edge. Ooh. Very risky here. Okay, uh. he should take another one. Mm -hmm. Just about. But he's really cutting it close here. Yeah, he has to recycle, honestly. Uh, he, oh, it is a speed tie. <laughs> uh, well, <laughs> both players clearly at minus six right now. I, I, I kind of feel Edward's own Snorlax as lower defense. It's not it shouldn't be at plus six. We haven't seen him curse for a while. And the last time we saw a curse, we saw all, bo all the boosts go off. Hmm. So both Snorlax be tying, but it was kind of on, on the edge right now because he, did, he doesn't seem to have accumulated as many boosts. And Chelsea moves first this time, gets double edge before a recycle. Yeah, not quite. If Edward goes for the recycle, we'll get his recovery. I mean, now Chelsea has to worry about her own berry. She has to recycle at this point. And all, while all this is going right, the timer steadily ticks down. Tells it down to 35, 30, about 30 seconds. Snorlax, uh, Edward Snorlax, oh, Edward, sorry, down to about 50 seconds. 54. Mm. So if both players take about 2 seconds to press, we're looking at maybe a 17 more turns. I wonder if the speed tie will come into effect as a deciding factor. Mm. Than I thought she would that then. Edward yeah, gonna recycle as well, I think. Uh, oh, no double, double, double oh, Does she have his berry right now? Uh, I think so, yes. I mean, why press double H when you, you yourself take recoil? Shouldn't they keep pressing stuff goes like for high house power instead? Mm. Not wanting to take the recoil. As Chelsea goes for double H to bring Edward to his berry. Oh, that's mm. a crit. Yeah. Once again, Chelsea takes the win with a critical hit. Yep. It's a bit of a shame though, because looking at based on timer, right, Chelsea was going to lose that match. Yep. Well. You have to wonder though, Edward, I don't think went to plus 6 on his defense. Yeah, I saw. Oh, no, but it's hard. Actually, no, I think, I think he, he did. He, because he, he his, his speed was at 6. There were so a couple, of, there six. Were couple of turns that we glossed over where. He didn't have the. I don't think he had as much attack as Chelsea. Yes. I, I saw a few that he should have pressed cursed a bit more. Maybe bring his attack up or, you know, not. Not worry about the critical hit, but yeah, when it comes down to critical yeah, hit, it came down to it, it didn't matter because she got the crit, he didn't. Eh, well, I was gonna have to adjust, and I don't need a combo should come into play between the crest and in fact, the, the oh, clearly, combo's there to handle Snorlax because close combat with or without a boost will just run right through Snorlax. However, it's clearly threatened by almost everything else and has Landris to intimidate it before it can close combat. And if he close combat to the Snorlax, uh, he drops his defense and allows Crest to land an even stronger side shot. What sort of special attackers does uh, Edward have on his, at his disposal? Okay, when you think about it, yeah, you, you really have to wonder. I think Komo kind of is kind of useful as, in a worst case scenario, it's also a Gigavolt switch in. Mm. Because he does resist electric, however, it's extremely weak to Dazzling Gleam. But, based on the first game, Chelsea hasn't shown any indication of bringing her Tapu aside from Coco. Coco, how much does Dazzling Gleam do to Coco? Coco, eh? Uh, Como. Como is four times weak, right? It's like eighty percent. Uh, and Dazzling Gleam's not a very strong move by itself. Well, game two, with Chelsea taking the first game. Ooh, does he adjust here though, Edward? Hmm. Well, he's gonna lead the same. 
from the side and set his Snorlax up again. However, the early Snorlax didn't really help him last game. Hey, Coco Cresselia. Like, it is the same lead for Chelsea. Yeah, it is. Yeah. The positions for Cresselia and Coco just reversed. But Edward at least is secure on the knowledge that he doesn't have to fear uh, immediate knockout from this, these two because Coco, we've seen the full moveset. It's probably a, a Thunderbolt or Thunder to get the Giga Volt. Mm -hmm. Volt switch, Destiny Dream and Protect. Yep. And Cresselia, we've seen the Ice Attack. It's not Ice Beam, it's Icy Wind. So yeah. Landorus is not really threatened by anything. Based on the first game though, Coco is going to switch out. It does with the Volt switch instead of a s normal switch. So you do expect Landorus to come in to get the double Intimidate on the Snorlax and Landorus. Could get punished with a lot of damage though. Mm. I think Edward going to U-turn. More reason to stay in to get an Icy Wind. Mm. Yeah, it, it sort of plays out exactly in the first game though. Which kind of tells me that Edward feels it's uh, oh, goes for the knockoff. Knock of the Chris of Landorus item immediately. Oh, and all no of a sudden, scar. I think Charizard outspeeds on Edward's side. Oh, but I see wind though. I mean, it's not going to kill the Landorus. It's not even going to do half. Yeah. Hmm. But that was a hard read, because that was a Coco slot. If it went into the Coco naturally, it, it wouldn't knock off anything, considering it's holding the Z-Crystal. It's not much of a hard read, because Chelsea was always going to either switch or mode switch. Hmm. She showed no, incli she showed no inclination to Giga Volt on the first turn. Okay, so the lander, but the lander now is free to like switch moves. So his Charizard isn't he? He can't really play around the Landorus as freely anymore. No, Charizard outspeeds Landorus. Ah, now. for for sure now lah. But what I mean is like if the Landorus locks his up the earthquake, he can change his moves later on. But now Charizard doesn't even have to worry about Landorus. Huh. Okay, Chelsea goes for Rock Slide. Definitely hoping for the flinch here. I assume. Doesn't have to lock herself, but she is she is naturally anyway. faster than the opposing Landorus. No, he's icy with it. Oh right, forgot to take that into account. And Ice Beam. Should pick up the KO here on Edward's Landorus. So, going down. Whereas, uh, Snorlax did set up a curse, so it's at plus one defense. Does get off another curse, so didn't flinch there. So, attack at one stage of increase. Mm -hmm. Defense at two, and, and speed dropping two. I kind of feel, yeah, Charizard should be coming in here. Well, Edward would have to feel confident enough that his Charizard is fast, third, than a uh, unscarfed Landorus, and clearly he does. Heat Wave should pick up the Landorus, do a good chunk, good deal, do a good chunk to the Cresselia. And Snorlax, I think, can start doing damage. Because Landorus cannot switch in to intimidate Snorlax further. He has to, if he switches out, something else gets punished. Yeah. She doesn't really have good heat wave switches. Landorus can't really protect as Since well. Since we expect it to be the Snorlax at the back, next yeah. to the Coco. Landorus, Landorus being the Scarf can't protect, he has to switch out. So, getting Coco, uh, Snorlax take damage? Looks like it. Mm. I mean, I think that's fine, but the Cresselia shouldn't really... I mean, it does have Psyshock, which targets the Charizard's lower special, uh, lower defense. Almost immaterial, though. Why? What do you mean? Since Charizard's high special defense and low defense, but Psyshock does have reduced power, so it kinda evens out. Ah. Slight increase, of course. Okay. Oh, Charizard will go with protect. protect, huh? But he mega as well, so. Go to uh, waste one turn of sun. Hmm. Crest goes for the Ice Wind, hoping to. Well, make it faster than the Charizard. Okay. I don't, I can't, I can't feel that Edward thought that uh, Chelsea would protect. And yes, double edge into the Snorlax, gonna punish it with the increase Ooh. that goes all the way down to the orange, gonna take its berry. And Chelsea, but Chelsea does, the thing here is that Chelsea can, and if she's worried about another attack from the Snorlax, because she hasn't cursed yet, she can curse before the attack hits and get the defense boost. Mm. Or she could be just like me and press recycle, get back the berry. Dangerous because we saw much the first double edge did. Charizard here going for the attack, heat wave does not miss. Lands on Snorlax, putting in range of double edge if she doesn't recycle. Okay. Or if she curses, she might survive. But then uh. the Charizard will pick it off next turn. Mm. I see Wind does reduce the speed for the Charizard. Well, Snorlax is going to go to minus 6 even <laughs> more quickly than it did last game. Does she go for the recycle to get the berry back. Gonna go all the, but gonna go straight back to the orange. And potentially in Heatwave KO range. Mm. Well, Edwards. Or definitely in Overheat KO range. And I think Edward can safely fire Overheat to that slot. The Snorlax can't protect. Yeah, but his Snorlax didn't go for attack, instead goes for the recycle here. So, being a bit more defensive in his play. And Charizard honestly can just fire off another Heat Wave here. There's no real risk. I guess you have to be aware of maybe a side shock and a double H double target. Hmm. Goes for the Heat Wave. He's gonna land on both targets. So, Snorlax gonna go back down to round half. Cresselia gonna eat his berry. Just about getting in range. Yeah, Snorlax. No, but Snorlax didn't go down exactly to a half. So. I think that's double. That much. Double edge should still do it though. If she, especially if she goes for her own double edge to get the Snorlax. Well, no. Goes for the curse. So the defense might save it from uh, Edward's own. But that would save it here. from Charizard. Hmm. And it's not like the Ice Beam is going to make him help Snorlax get faster than Charizard. <laughs> He's curse, she's cursing. Mm -hmm. And goes double, for the double edge. edge. That's going to do enough? 
No, hangs on with 52 HP. Doesn't get his own berry. Yeah, so at this point, Charizard looking to heat wave and get rid of the Snorlax. Hasn't missed the heat wave yet. Fingers whoa, whoa, crossed there. Don't, don't jinx it, don't jinx it. Goes and for the heat wave, gonna connect, brings down the Snorlax. And now, Edward's only one with a boosted Snorlax on the field. Does he go for another curse? Goes for a side shock into Charizard. We saw you do around 30%. Yes, not. Oh, take just about take it out. Alright, so they both trade Mons here, although Edward does get a free move and with Char his. And goes down as well. Mm, and gets yeah. his berry with the recoil, I think. Who? Uh, yeah. This is his last slot, though. Just now, he's just, he, without Charizard, though. Is it Katana? He doesn't have much to threaten the Lando on Chelsea's side of the field. If it is Katana. Well, I guess it would be good. So he's on Coco. Against a Landorus. Ugh. He's faster. Yeah, that's for sure, but he can't. And she can't really earthquake that freely either. Because of her own his Coco. Own, her own Coco. And Earthquake's not really going to do so much to. Yeah, Snorlax. not like plus two or three. I kind of feel Chelsea is going for protect Earthquake here. She wants to sort of chip the, the, the Snorlax down into Gigavolt Havoc uh, KO range. I think that's her only. That's one of her best options here. But let's not forget, Edward has his own Gigavolt, I think. Hmm. But you're not going to Gigavolt into a Landorus, are you? You Gigavolt into the opposing Coco. Yeah. So, I think Chelsea's going to protect There's her no Coco. reason for, for... Actually, Edward just protects her, his own Coco. And yes. goes for a double edge into the Landorus. Landorus can't protect. He knows yes. his scarf. Yes. Doesn't carry protect. Yeah, that's protect on Edward. Does Chelsea go for it as well? She needs to double into the Snorlax and pray. Hmm. <laughs> Since her deities clearly do a lot of work for yeah. her. Yeah, and there we go. It is the Gigavolt. Going to the... Oh, the Snorlax? Does already ate its has already eaten its berry, so oh no yeah this is also super powerful to think about. Hmm. Or she could just try to finish in rock style. Oh. He does round seventy we saw in game one. Maybe a bit under there. Hmm. Yeah, just about. Super power will connect to the booster Snorlax. Hmm, just enough to take it out. Yeah, I was kind of calling the protect a bit too hard there. Mm hmm. I think he thought he could survive a double target. It's hard to see why else he made that play. Hmm. So... Is there any way, Edward? Nah, kind of no, difficult, right? No, he doesn't right? have enough damage. Yeah. Dazzling Gleam can't take out the Lando. No, that's... Uh, Chelsea's Dazzling Gleam. Edward's own Dazzling can't take out the Lando. And Earthquake will... Oh, she's got the Rock Slide, actually. Yeah. Hmm. Why not no Earthquake? One, uh? I mean... No, no, no one's surprised. <laughs> yeah, I mean, she should just close it out with Earthquake. But eh. Mm. Mm. I don't think a critical hit at this point. No, definitely will pick up the Coco. Doesn't want to get Chelsea's one. Uh, that Zengling. Oh, that was unfortunate. But he's gonna go down to a single target that's game regardless. Mm. So Chelsea does take the win, two zero. Moves on Edward. to a potential semi-final matchup with the winner of Rain and Yichie. Mm. I maybe Coco wasn't the call for Edward's last slot. Considering that what ended up being the case, it's weird because he clearly dropped the Como, but in the situation in game two, Como would have been so much better. Mm. Since you kind of forced, you kind of forced a, uh, a situation where the Coco on Chelsea side to pick a target. I think Gleam or Gigavolt have. Out. I think the Katana and would he have. Just, he can just double attack that turn. Yeah. He can just go for the Clangorous and the double edge into the Landorus slot. And Chelsea can only, Chelsea really cannot, can, can, and Chelsea can't actually pick off either. Dazzling doesn't KO the Komo from full, and Thunder and Giga wouldn't, wouldn't KO the Snorlax. Mm. So actually Komo would probably have won ever the set there, I uh, ever the game there. I, I don't know, I think Katana maybe would have been better. Does outspeed the Lander since the Scarf has Yeah, and Katana gone. will also do the work, but Katana will get it's intimidated. Yes, turn. yeah, but... But Leaf Blade probably picks up the KO at that range. Mm, yes, so about 60% perhaps, yeah. And also the katana would be sashed. No, probably. The, the issue for Edward is that the, the last slot he brought in had to be able to kill the Landorus. Mm. And that's and Coco's the one thing that can't. Mm. Yeah. I he, suppose. He does, it, uh, because it, it looks like he doesn't carry the hidden power eyes. Mm. If he had hidden power eyes, I think he just goes for it there and I think he wins the set quite handily. Wins the game rather. Mm. It's a bit so then yeah, he, he he'd have no reason to protect because he outspeeds the hidden power eyes regardless. Mm. So you so I rag on Hidden Power Ice Double Coco a lot. <laughs> I think it's a very poor solution to opposing Landorus. E but in that scenario, Edward really could have used it. Then I mean, he maybe when he protected 
uh, with his Coco, even if he electroned into the opposing Coco, Coco uh, even if he takes it out, that just means uh, Chelsea is just free to earthquake and get rid of the Coco. But then Alex wins. So. No, as in, uh, assuming the Snorlax goes down, as in based on that double target with the Giga Volt and the super power into the Snorlax, and uh, Edward doesn't doesn't protect with his Coco, but uh, instead maybe fires off an uh, Electrum Z into the opposing Tapu Coco. Um, gets rid of it, but then Chelsea is just free to earthquake at this point. At that point. Yeah, mm. the his knowledge just wasn't in healthy enough. Look, it looked like he needed one more curse. Take the superpower. At mm. least. Maybe even more. Superpower is a very strong move. A single target. I have to wonder if he had the berry as well. That uh, would have been... The berry, I think, would have changed, but it's hard to time it that much. Mm. Mm. Perhaps he was a bit too greedy taking chaos earlier. Considering what he, he had in the back, especially. Maybe he should have um, fully... Grasped yeah. his endgame situation mm. with Coco at the back. He probably should have played. Sh he probably should have delayed the early chaos. Yeah, I mean, to play himself his situation, but he had his berry. Leaving the leaving the um, but at the same time, when he attacked into the Cressela, that was that was to pick up the KO and to trigger his berry and to bring him to a full HP. Yeah, that's true. So he was stuck either way. Hmm. Well, that's a pretty hard game to solo. I mean, it was a two-zero victory, but honestly, the first game was just down to a critical hit, which. Yep. At this point, I'm not really surprised. Uh. But game two, yeah, Edward did made the made the adjustment that just didn't work out for him. Hmm. Maybe the maybe the Coco should come in early game as opposed to keeping it for the late game, considering that he was totally kind of useless in that end game scenario. Hmm. Charizard, I think was okay, and uh, Charizard was good. But I think that by instead of losing the Charizard, he probably should have tried to dispose of the Coco instead. He traded the Charizard for uh, the early chaos. And maybe Coco should have been the one to do that because Charizard would have won him the game at the end. And he forced Coco to pick a target again. If you look at maybe the knockoff into uh, the Chelsea's Landorus also, maybe it wasn't such a good thing because it sort it freed up Chelsea's no, uh, no, Landorus no, that, that to. No, that. Really? But he, he needed that knockoff. If because if Scarf, the scarf was Scarf there, just it gives it, it transfers everything else on his team. It gives him very little. Um, it, let's not forget if he had, if he had been, um, if he had been Scarf in the first place, he would have other end game plays than just the double target with the. Giga Volt and Super Power. Yeah, but if she had locked herself into Super Power at the end game, then Super Power doesn't really threaten the Coco, and then she could, and then maybe Edward could just dazzling gleam his way. But then again, you're fighting against a, do rock, a double target versus sliding. a single target. It, he, she would be rock sliding. Uh, I think Snorlax can survive, and then and recycle. then what happens when he's when he, when after he survives? Uh, he recycles. No, no, try again. Uh, he gets flinched. Yes. Uh -huh. <laughs> okay. Uh. Oh. So upcoming match, I believe, will be against UCF versus Rain. Yeah, it's hard to say what's happening on the other side of the bracket since I I believe we'll be streaming that actually. Oh, no, you, you, you the, mean other the other side, side of the bracket. Uh. Yeah, uh, I I just see Alistair walking in and out with coffee in his hand, so it's <laughs> so not entirely sure what's happening on the other side of the bracket. I don't think uh, Isma is that that much of a pushover, so maybe the players are just not starting yet. Hmm. Or could be breaks in between. I don't know. Oh well. Well, at least we have one winner though. Yeah, apparently Melvin has beaten Weiwen. So I the old monster of APEC mm -hmm. triumphs over the new monster of APEC. Based and on maybe, the just maybe, one day we want to learn to check his team sheet better. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say I'm not really surprised about the outcome considering Weiwen I think had one Pokemon removed from his team sheet. Well, it's not the first time. Might not be the last time. But Weiwen still sitting pretty near the top of the standings, mm -hmm. despite his <laughs> unintentional four pass, so but he does his run does his run does end at top eight as does Edwards. Yeah, well. So Melvin moves on as does Chelsea, and we will bring Chelsea on for an interview.
and we are here with the winner of that top 8 match we have just witnessed Chelsea beating over Edward uh, who has flown all the way from uh, overseas well, okay Chelsea so first of all what's your game plan against Edward um I guess to <laughs> take out Snorlax as soon as possible but actually I don't know <laughs> you so aside from Snorlax I mean that was the only thing that you focused on the rest of his team actually I wait I focus on the Landorus more He's Landorus. Yeah. Okay, so uh, I mean, aside from the Snorlax, which uh did have curse because you have your own curse Snorlax, so um uh, were there any other threats or did did you consider perhaps another form of speed control with the crest? I have both icy wind and trick room. So yeah, so maybe you why why did you prefer to go for the icy wind then instead of the trick room? Oh, because yeah, it um it hits like both targets and. Uh, okay. So um, aside from uh the s s okay. So how did you build your team then? Where where did you did you draw inspiration or did you is it something you came up on your own? Um, I got like a QR code on on bet on global link. Like it was originally a uh, Ferrothorn instead of Snorlax, but I put Snorlax in last minute. <laughs> okay. Um, has Snorlax been working out for you? Because based on uh, because. First of all, like Snorlax is sort of a, uh, sort of a leftover from the seventeen meta. So how's it been faring for you? Are there any or are there any thoughts you have? It it's actually really good though. Like it carried me through like quite a lot of matches. Mm, uh, have there been situations because I've I've discussed with Matthew uh, at nauseum about the difference between belly drum and curse. So do you encounter sort of any problems where you curse but you are not able to, uh, gain momentum because cursing takes time to get your attack up. So far, I haven't encountered any belly drum Snorlax, so no. Oh, okay. Uh, well then, all the best for your top four, which I'm not sure who is it against. Um, based on the bracket, it should be between... Well, doesn't matter. Good luck for your <laughs> top four match later on. Okay, thank yeah. you. And stay tuned, we'll bring you the next top eight match shortly.